Hello health champions. Today we're going to talk about what would happen if you were to eat five eggs a day every day for 30 days or for the rest of your life even. Then we have to understand that quality makes a big difference. There are all these different classifications. There's caged and cage-free, free-range, pasture-raised. Some are certified humane, organic, and others are not. And there's also pasteurized. What does all this mean? Well, caged is the cheapest and the worst. They're basically just abiding by the minimum requirement of the law. And I would stay away from basically the first three categories. Cage-free is a little bit better, but they're out of cages, but they can still be crammed in together and never see the light of day. Free range sounds really positive, right? They're out on the range. But in reality, this is where there's the biggest confusion because in some cases, these hens and chickens could actually be raised under pretty good conditions. But on the other hand, free range simply means that they have access, theoretical access to the outside. So you could have this huge, huge building with a tiny little opening over at one end and there's thousands and thousands of birds and they've been raised under artificial lights, artificial conditions, but then there's this little hole at the end of the building and theoretically they could peek their head out and then they have access and it's free range, but the vast majority of these birds would never see the light of day. So my minimum standard is pasture raised, which doesn't mean much in itself unless it's accompanied by one of these two. If it's pasture raised and certified humane, then they have to have at least 108 square feet. And now you know that these birds live outside, they come in to spend the night, but these birds are actually pastured. They're free roaming, they're foraging for food, they're eating bugs and worms and things that hens and chickens are supposed to eat. They also get sunlight and they get some exercise and movement. So just like humans, that makes a big difference in your health. Now the organic doesn't refer at all to the circumstances, that's just the type of food. Organic means that all the feed is certified organic, there's no pesticides in it. But a lot of times I would rather have a non-organic pasture raised than an organic free range because I trust more that the birds that are walking outside are going to be healthier. So it's not so clear cut there. Then pasteurized is simply that they're decontaminated, that they rinse them in hot water to decontaminate the shell from bacteria and then they keep them in a water bath to slowly raise the temperature up to a point where they kill off a lot of pathogens, potential salmonella, but not so warm that they start cooking the egg. And some brands of eggs make a big deal out of this pasteurized and they stamp the eggs and they label the boxes, but it doesn't mean a whole lot because technically according to the USDA, all eggs that are sold to the public, sold in stores, are supposed to be pasteurized. So just realize that there's a big difference between pasture raised, which you absolutely want, and pasteurized, which most eggs are anyway. So when I started talking about the quality of eggs about 10, 15 years ago, I pointed out that a lot of the mass-produced eggs, not only are they not so healthy, but they're also pale and tasteless. That if you look at the yolk, you're going to see that it's very pale as a reflection that there's not a lot of nutrients in there. Whereas if you went for pasture raised, if you had any animal that had a normal life that went around and got some sunshine and so forth, there would be a very, very deep color to the yolk. And you could definitely take the difference between these two. They'd be very pale and tasteless versus very rich and full of flavor. But of course, you know what's coming next, right? If people learn to look for the color, someone's going to find a way to cheat. So of course now, with the, even the mass-produced eggs, 
they produce synthetic color. So you can buy feed that gives the egg yolk the color you want. So now that's not much of an indication anymore because you can find some eggs with a deep yolk that are still mass produced and where the chickens, the hens were not very healthy at all and there's not much flavor or health to it. One thing you get when you eat five eggs a day is you get a bunch of micronutrients, the vitamins and minerals. DHA is an essential fatty acid that's very supportive of brain. You get vitamin D, calcium, iron, vitamin A, vitamin E. You get B2, niacin, B6, folate, B12, biotin, B5. So this is almost all of the essential B vitamins. You get phosphorus, you get iodine, zinc, selenium, and choline, which used to be classified as an essential B vitamin, but now it's not because the body can make a little bit of it, but it can't make enough to keep you healthy. So it's still super, super important to get choline in the diet. Now, as impressive as these numbers are, these numbers are actually from regular mass-produced eggs. So if you get the pasture raised, then these are going to be even more impressive. The minerals are probably not going to change too much, but the DHA, the essential fatty acids, and the fat-soluble vitamins are going to be increased as much as two to six times. So that means you're going to get 100% or more on a lot of these vitamins simply by eating five eggs a day. What an incredible food. You're also going to get a lot of macronutrients. Five eggs are going to give you 350 calories. And I'm not one to count calories a whole lot, but I just wanted to point out that 350 calories is not a whole lot. It's only 17% of what most people eat in a day but you get all those micronutrients that we saw on the previous slide. And this is very, very filling. You get so satisfied. If you had this for lunch, it would easily carry you over to dinner. You also get 25 grams of fat, out of which seven and a half grams are saturated. And here is where a lot of people start choking on their toast and orange juice because this is what we've been scared about. And one single egg is gonna have 62% of all the cholesterol that you're allowed to eat in a day. And here you go 925 milligrams from five eggs. You're getting 310%, scary number. So we're, we'll come back and talk about this, but cholesterol is the biggest hang up that people have about this. You're also gonna get 30 grams of protein, and that's 60% of your daily allowance. Now, some people are gonna eat a lot more than that or less depending on the size and your activity. But what we wanna understand and talk about next is how that 30 grams actually can kind of become a lot more. Because protein from different foods is handled very differently. It has different levels of usefulness. So five eggs will give you 30 grams of protein, but you could also eat that from different kinds of food. So we'll see how they relate. If you got 30 grams of protein from egg white, or you got it from whey, which is a milk protein, or you got it from soy, which is the protein source for most protein powders and protein bars, you could get it from meat, like fish, chicken, beef, etc or you could get it from a whole egg. Now, protein is supposed to become building blocks. That's the unique part about protein. If we wanna build certain tissues like muscles or skin or bone or hair or nails, we can't do that with carbohydrate or fat. If we wanna build enzymes, if we wanna build certain hormones, then we have to have that protein. And here's what we want to understand. The better the amino acids are combined to fit our bodies, the greater the percentage of this protein that becomes building blocks. And the ones that we can't use for building blocks is basically wasted. It becomes fuel. 
So it's kind of like if you're building a house and you buy this big pile of lumber, and if it's really good quality, you could use most of that lumber to fit your house. It becomes structure in your house. But if you're buying inappropriate or really poor quality building materials, then you might only use 15, 20% and the rest you have to toss on the fire and it turns into energy. Well, the body is basically the same way. The better the quality of the protein, the more similar it is to what you're trying to do, the more gets converted into building blocks. And what that means is if it turns to building blocks, it doesn't really have calories. It doesn't become energy until you are done with the building blocks or you can't use them for building blocks and you turn it into energy. So if you were to eat 30 grams of protein from meat, then one third of that becomes tissue or building blocks. The rest is turned into energy. If you eat soy, only one sixth, only half as much. So the protein value of soy is only half that of meat. And the same thing holds true for whey. Even though that is an animal product, by the time we break it apart and isolate the whey, we can't use it as well anymore. And what about egg? The whole egg, we can use a half. And other than mother's milk, which is mostly for babies, we assume, the whole egg is the best protein source that we have. And here's the interesting part, that most people associate egg protein with the egg white, because the egg white is just water and protein, water and albumin. And a lot of bodybuilders will bulk up on egg white. They'll eat five eggs and 20 egg whites to get all that protein. Well, the problem is you're not really getting much protein from that. You're only getting one sixth to turn into tissue, which is the muscle that the bodybuilders are looking for. Now, for a bodybuilder, you can still bulk up. It still kind of works, but not for the reason that you think. So the protein can become amino acids, which is building blocks, or it can turn into carbohydrate and be burned for energy. Carbohydrate is glucose. It raises blood sugar. And what happens now is the glucose stimulates insulin. And this is why even non-carbohydrate foods can stimulate insulin and be in the insulin index, which basically measures how much of an insulin response do we get from this food. And that depends on how much or how little of that protein becomes building blocks and how much is turned into glucose. So when we eat egg white, 30 grams of protein from egg white, we get five grams to become building blocks and 25 that becomes carbohydrate, that becomes blood sugar. Now this still works for a bodybuilder because insulin is an anabolic hormone. It's a storage hormone. So it drives fuel, both protein and glucose into the cell. And therefore it helps bulk up. And if you're a bodybuilder, you probably have a fairly healthy metabolism, metabolic health. Whereas this is not such a great idea if you are a diabetic, if you have insulin resistance and you're trying to reverse that, then you want to be much more particular about this. Whey and soy obviously will have the same numbers. Meat, you have 10 grams turn into tissue, 20 grand turns into fuel. And with whole eggs, we have half and half. So even though only half becomes building blocks, that's still much, much better than any other food we have access to. And cholesterol is probably the single biggest reason that people are afraid of eating eggs. We've been told so many times that cholesterol is bad, it causes heart disease, and eggs are the richest source of cholesterol out there, basically. And they're telling us we can only eat 300 milligrams or less of dietary cholesterol per day. 
And by the time you have five eggs, you've had more than three times that daily limit. So a lot of people are super scared. They hear some benefits, but then they hear that they're going to have a heart attack. Well, to me, that number is completely random. In fact, it might be the most random or arbitrary number they have ever come up with because the body makes anywhere from 1,000 to 3,000 milligrams of cholesterol per day. If you eat less, your body makes more. If you eat more, the body makes less. And the only time that the body doesn't make more is if it can't. So if the liver is really, really unhealthy or interfered with, if you have metal toxicity, then you might see really low cholesterol levels because your liver can't make it. It's too damaged. And of course, the other example is if you're on a statin drug, because these statins interfere with what the liver is trying to do. The body wants a certain amount of cholesterol, but with a statin drug, the body can't make it. Now, if we make this much every day, then the dietary cholesterol is rather insignificant. So is cholesterol an essential nutrient? Well, this is kind of like splitting hairs. Essential is a definition and essential means we have to add it from the environment because the body cannot make it at all. But we can make cholesterol, so from that point of definition, it is not essential, but it is essential in the sense that it is super, super important and we're not going to be healthy if we don't get enough or if we can't make enough. Cholesterol is essential for nerve tissue, the wires where the brain sends signals out to the different body parts, they're covered with an insulation called myelin that the biggest component is cholesterol. We have cell membranes. We have 40 trillion cells. They process billions of bits of information every second. And how well they can process that information depends on the flexibility and fluidity of the cell membranes, which in turn depends on cholesterol. And cholesterol is also the precursor for things like hormones, vitamin D, and bile. And here's the second biggest fear factor when it comes to eggs or animal products overall. Is saturated fat. If you eat five eggs, you get seven and a half grams of saturated fat. And if you believe the official guidelines, you're already 40% maxed out on your saturated fat. And the reason they tell you to avoid saturated fat is that they believe total cholesterol will increase and LDL will increase. Now here's what I have found. This is not completely untrue. What is untrue is that this causes heart disease, but it does tend to go up. It's like a 50-50. Half the people, they see increased cholesterol and LDL. The other half, they see decreased cholesterol and LDL when they increase their saturated fat. But what you have to trust is that the body knows what it's doing and if you address the truly important things, then your body will take care of the rest. And it doesn't really matter what the total cholesterol or LDL is. But what they're telling you is that when these go up, you get heart disease. And therefore, high saturated fat, high cholesterol is a bad thing. In my experience, it's not. Because what we see is if you increase your saturated fat, you get more satisfied and you know to eat more real food, then you eat less carbohydrate, your glucose goes down, your A1C goes down. These are markers for diabetes type 2 and metabolic disease. Your triglycerides will go down, but most importantly, the only cholesterol factors that really matter will get better. Your LDL size will increase and your HDL will go up. So it doesn't really matter what the total number of cholesterol or LDL is. If all the other factors get better, you are getting healthier and you're moving away 
from heart disease. Now, eggs are so fantastically good for the brain, it needs a special mention. If you eat five eggs and you eat the pasture raised, where the animals have been eating bugs and getting sunshine and exercise, you're going to get about 100 milligrams of EPA and about 600 milligrams of DHA per day. And for most people, this is going to be all you need. So you could basically get all your essential fatty acids from five eggs. Now this ratio is going to be flip-flopped from what you get if you eat fish oil. If you eat fish oil, you're going to get more EPA, which is a good support for general inflammation. But if you need brain support, then you're looking for the higher DHA. And for some people, taking DHA as a supplement or through five quality eggs can work better than an antidepressant. DHA has a calming effect on the brain because it stimulates the frontal lobe and helps inhibit stress and anxiety and so forth. And unlike an antidepressant, it works by supporting, by bringing in more of the function that's supposed to be there, whereas an antidepressant interferes with the normal balance. The second thing that helps the brain, which you can get from eggs, is called choline. That's a precursor for acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter. It's a signaling molecule in the brain, and it's one of the absolute most important. It's one of the main ones. It is involved with arousal and focus. It is also involved with learning and neuroplasticity. So in order for you to learn new things, to develop new skills, you need to rewire your brain and make new synapses and eggs with choline that is a precursor for acetylcholine can be very, very supportive of this. Another aspect of health and brain health is the quality of sleep. And acetylcholine supports REM sleep. And when you have enough of that deep REM sleep, then you wake up more rested. And here's one more example of how the egg bashers are actually beating up the hero. There is a genetic variant called MTHFR that is so common that 30 to 40% of the world's population actually has a mutation or a variant in this gene. And MTHFR stands for methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase. Don't worry about the name. But the ASE at the end indicates it's an enzyme. So it's involved in transforming one thing into another. And you don't have to memorize any of this, but if it helps you recognize this, if you come across it, then MTHFR sounds a lot like a very popular profanity. So what's more important though is what does this enzyme do? it converts a bad thing into a good thing. Homocysteine is a byproduct. It's an intermediate. So the liver does its job and it kicks out some homocysteine. And if everything is working, this quickly turns into methionine, which is a really good thing. It's a sulfur containing amino acid that the body uses to make glutathione, which is one of our internal antioxidants. So when we don't convert this efficiently, now homocysteine builds up and it becomes a huge problem. It is very, very inflammatory and it is one of the strongest indicators for heart disease. It's been linked to miscarriages and heart disease. So even though 30 to 40 percent of the world's population has this variant, and it is so easy to spot, and the solution is so simple, most people have no idea because this is very rarely measured. You could measure either the homocysteine or you could measure the MTHFR. The homocysteine is cheaper and easier, and it's really the thing that you're looking for because that is the actual indicator of the problem. And if you have an elevated homocysteine, and by the way, 
On the blood work, a lot of places, they'll say that anything up to 15 is okay. But again, that's because so many people have high levels, they think it's normal. You really want to be under seven. And if you're over seven, then what you do is you supplement. And all you have to do is add in a few B vitamins and some methyl donors. So B6, B9, B12, and methyl donors like trimethylglycine or methylcobalamin for B12. And most people reverse this problem very, very quickly. And there are several good supplements out that have the exact combination that you need to handle this. So you could take a single pill and basically handle this. I'll put a link down below of the one we're using in my office. So the egg is fantastic. It's packed with nutrition. And the only drawback would be for a small percentage of people if you have an allergy or a sensitivity. And unfortunately, allergies are becoming more common, especially in young people because a lot of the vaccines, they grow these pathogens on a substrate of eggs, and then they inject that. So even if they just trace amounts of egg, but you inject it, now you can get very severe allergies. But if you don't have a sensitivity, then don't worry about eggs, and you can eat as much as you like. But be sure to cook them gently. And what I recommend is soft boiled, poached, over easy, or lightly scrambled. That way you don't damage. You're not gonna really mess with the minerals, but the essential fatty acids and some of the vitamins are a little more sensitive to heat. So when I make scrambled eggs, I start off with a tablespoon or so of butter. You crack the eggs into the pan, and then you slowly move them around without breaking the yolk until most of the egg white has hardened. And then when it's close to hardened, then you break the egg yolk and you stir it around on low heat. And then just before it starts to harden, when the egg yolk is still kind of glossy, then you take it all. And you don't want it to harden because then you lose a lot of the flavor. And if you've never had scrambled eggs like that, you're in for a treat. And whatever you do, don't cook your scrambled eggs so they look like this. This is like what you get at a lot of hotel buffets. And it is so tasteless and so rubbery. If you're not careful putting it on your plate, it all bounces off. So that's why it's good to be familiar with intermittent fasting so you don't have to eat a breakfast at all. You can wait till you get home and then you can scramble your eggs. You can get some good pastured eggs and scramble them the way you like. If you enjoyed this video, you're gonna love that one. And if you truly wanna master health by understanding how the body really works, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell, and turn on all the notifications so you never miss a life-saving video.